Module 5, Volume Targeted Ventilation. In this module, we'll focus on volume control modes of ventilation. By the end of this module, you will be able to describe the rationale for volume ventilation and outline the differences in types of volume ventilation. Let's review the slide from the previous module. In volume control ventilation, the tidal volume is preset. There's a specific volume of gas to be delivered that is targeted and the amount of inspiratory pressure is adjusted by the ventilator so that the same tidal volume is delivered with each breath. The term volume control is often used interchangeably with volume targeted, volume limited, and volume preset. In volume control ventilation, tidal volume delivered is directly controlled and pressure becomes the dependent variable. In volume control ventilation, pressure is delivered in a shark's fin wave form, indicating that the pressure is passive and rises more slowly than is seen in pressure control. The delivery of the maximum pressure occurs at the end of inspiration in volume control ventilation. In addition, in volume control ventilation, the flow is derived in a square wave form. This indicates flow stays constant until the target volume is reached at the end of inspiration. In pressure targeted ventilation, the flow waveform is sinusoidal and the opening pressure is reached quickly. After the target pressure has been reached, flow decelerates rapidly until inspiration is complete. Pressure control time cycle ventilation was the mainstay of respiratory care in the NICU for many years, mostly due to a lack of success with volume control ventilation in small neonates because of devices that lacked flow sensors. In addition, there was an increased concern that barotrauma caused lung injury, so the theory was that by controlling pressure, you would reduce barotrauma. However, we now know that pressure by itself, without excessively large lung volumes, is not the main cause of lung injury. Many publications have shown that excessive tidal volume or volutrauma, not as much pressure, is responsible for lung injury. Volume-targeted ventilation can also be used to avoid inadvertent hyperventilation, occasionally seen in infants with pressure-limited ventilation. With volume-targeted ventilation, tidal volume is the controlled variable, and the inflation pressure will vary with the lung's compliance. For safety, peak inspiratory pressures are limited. As lung compliance improves, volume-targeted ventilation results in an automatic and real-time weaning of the pressure, instead of manual decreases as would be needed in a pressure control ventilation modality. Conversely, a decrease in lung compliance will result in an increase in pressure needed to deliver the set tidal volume. In a meta-analysis comparing pressure-limited ventilation to volume-targeted ventilation, Peng et al. noted that with volume-targeted ventilation, there is a decrease in BPD, lower rate of pneumothorax, less hypocarbia, decreased risk of intraventricular hemorrhage and periventricular accumulation, and a significantly shorter duration of mechanical ventilation. Studies included in the meta-analysis were small and outcomes reported in the meta-analysis were not prospectively collected. In addition, there were a variety of modalities used in the study as comparators, limiting generalization. Though often used interchangeably, there is a difference between volume-controlled and volume-targeted ventilation. Volume control delivers a constant and preset tidal volume into the ventilator circuit with each breath. The pressure rises passively and generates enough pressure necessary to reach the set tidal volume into the circuit. Inflation cycles off when the peak volume is reached. This mode requires a maximum inflation time and pressure to be set as safety measures. This mode controls volume delivery into the ventilator circuit rather than the tidal volume that enters the patient's lungs. Volume measured at the ventilator does not account for the compression of gas in the circuit and humidifier, distension of the compliant circuit, or air leak around the endotracheal tube. These are the reasons why the older generations of volume-controlled ventilators were mostly impractical for use in small premature infants. In contrast, volume-targeted ventilation is actually a modification of pressure control ventilation. Using a flow sensor to measure tidal volume at the proximal airway, Volume targeted ventilation is designed to deliver a targeted tidal volume ad by adjusting the ventilator pressure and time. These devices regulate tidal volume based on the measurement of gas flow rate. The higher the flow rate, the shorter the inspiratory time. Flow and thus tidal volume can be measured either during inhalation or exhalation. The leak is typically greater during inhalation, so the measurement of exhaled tidal volume more closely resembles the actual tidal volume. Clinicians can manually set the volume to achieve the desired exhaled by tidal volume. The volume guarantee mode is available only on some ventilators. Volume guarantee can be combined with any of these basic pressure control ventilator modes reviewed in the previous module. It's a volume targeted pressure controlled form of ventilation. This mode can either be time cycled or flow cycled depending on if it's used with SIMV, AC, or PSV. 
a flow sensor is used to measure flow at exhalation to determine the exhaled tidal volume and adjust inspiratory pressures to target the desired tidal volume. In volume guarantee mode, the clinician sets the targeted tidal volume and a pressure limit. The ventilator compares the exhaled tidal volume from the previous inflation and adjusts the pressure up or down to target the set tidal volume. The machine has a limit to pressure increments from one breath to the next, usually up to a max of three centimeters of water change for any given breath. This means it may take a few breath cycles to reach each a targeted tidal volume if there is a significant change in patient lung compliance or inspiratory effort. Looking at the waveforms on this slide, you can see that the tidal volume for the second breath is below the target volume. So on the next breath, the pressure is increased to reach the target volume. On the following breath, the volume is above the target, and so the pressure is decreased. The dotted line at the top is the set pressure limit. As a safety mechanism, the inflation is terminated if the pressure reaches this pressure, even if the set tidal volume has not been reached. Volume guarantee is not available on all ventilator devices. In addition, some devices with the volume guarantee mode do not have the capabilities of measuring the true tidal volume with large endotracheal tube leaks. These infants may require reintubation with a larger endotracheal tube to reduce leak or conversion to a pressure control mode of ventilation. There are some devices that are able to compensate for large ET tube leaks up to 75 to 80 percent leak. These technologies on some devices make volume guarantee feasible for all infants. In addition to a more consistent tidal volume delivered to patients, the volume guarantee mode has the benefit of allowing automatic weaning, requiring fewer blood gases. In this mode, the clinician should not necessarily lower the target tidal volume to wean the ventilator unless there has been a change in patient condition. The improved compliance of the respiratory system and the infant's respiratory effort will lead to a decrease in the pressure required to achieve the target tidal volume. Lowering the target tidal volume below the patient's physiologic needs will increase the work of breathing and could cause atelectasis. This concludes the module on volume ventilation. Thank you for your attention. We would like to acknowledge the American Academy of Pediatrics, the Organization of Neonatology Training Program Directors, Neo Reviews, and Abbott Nutrition for their support of this educational program. This concludes this module.